What's going on guys? This is Amal from Tech Leather Craft. In this video, I want to take a moment to talk about some braided leather dog leashes. I'm going to talk about the design I chose to use. Hopefully this will help out a couple people. First, if you're interested in just buying my leather dog leash to explain the process, the way I designed the dog leashes and the reason I chose for that. And just help people who are interested in buying or making their own dog leash, some things to keep in mind. Now, of course, this is just my opinion. This is just from my research that I've done. I did spend several weeks researching dog leashes and design and playing with prototypes. So to me, this is kind of the strongest, most durable design. So to get right into it, the first thing you want to keep in mind is leather thickness. The minimum leather thickness you want to use is 8 to 9 ounce leather. That's roughly about an eighth of an inch thick or about 3 to 3.5 millimeters, give or take. The leather I'm using is actually 9 to 10 ounce leather. It is a little bit thicker. It's about 3.5 to 4 millimeters in thickness. It's a little bit more sturdy. The other piece of this is the leather choice. I strongly recommend going with leather that is tanned or made for outdoor use. And what I mean by that is harness leather, bridle leather, and a latigo or latigo, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Those are made to be wet or get wet and not be impacted the same way some of the other leathers are. You could use veg tan tooling leather, and those make nice belts, nice gun holsters. That just requires a little bit more upkeep, in my opinion, and a little bit more prep work if you're making your own. For example, you have to seal it really well or trust if you're buying one, that the person who made it sealed it really well. Whereas harness leather that I'm using here, it's kind of infused with these oils and fats during the tanning process. So it's a nice, soft, supple feel. It's still super strong, but it does really well against water resistance. And the harness leather is what they use actually when you're making like horse reins, for example, and like tack gear. And so it has really nice feel to it, like in the hands, but it's super durable as far as water resistance and weatherproofing goes. Other thing you need to consider is hardware choices. I chose to go with the trigger snap. I won't go into all the details, but in my research, I found trigger snaps were just a little bit more durable compared to the typical snap bolt. I don't think you could go wrong with either one, but I think if you choose to go with a snap bolt, be sure to check like right where the hook is. Make sure it's a nice thick metal. Make sure this it's nice and reinforced. The main point with snap bolts is there is a single point of failure, which is of course that snap, the bolt part. Whereas with trigger snaps, they're kind of like claws and the two pieces kind of meet together. The failure point is lessened. So I won't go into the full details of it. I've just read several articles. And in my experience, the trigger snaps are also a little bit nicer to use. Now they do take some getting used to if you're not used to like angling your finger or thumb. But what happens is because the trigger snaps have this nice uh, surface area, it's actually really easy to do to pull them back compared to bolt snaps where you have this little kind of nub and you need to kind of catch that with your thumb. With trigger snaps, there's this nice surface area that you can actually get a nice grip on with your thumb or even your pointer finger. I actually prefer trigger snaps on all the hardware I use, whether it's my keychains that I make or my dog leashes. Now, of course, if someone wants, I can always use a bolt snap uh, design. I have had a couple people custom order that style. I'll show that later in the video. The other thing to keep in mind as far as hardware goes is in generally you want to go with something that is brass. So my hardware right now is brass with a nickel plating. The other thing you will find is steel with a nickel plating. Uh, the issue with steel though is especially down kind of where the dog is, steel can rust. Now that's usually not a huge deal, but it is something to keep in mind, whereas brass is a little bit better at water resistance. Now one other hardware thing I will talk about is I added this little D-ring to my leash by the handle so it's kind of a twofold idea it allows you for you to store either like a poop bag or a treat bag or whatever you want you can kind of clip that bag on and then pull out plastic bags as you need the other thing was it does end up shortening the leash and so if you're storing it like on a hook on a wall or something instead of having the leash completely hang down off the hook you can actually kind of clip the trigger snap onto it and it kind of shortens it a little bit it just makes it a little bit easier to manage and just uh, store and then the other piece to think about is a length. I actually chose to go with shorter lengths, three feet, like three and a half feet, four feet, one and a half feet. You can see the options on my website. There's actually several reasons for that. And this is also personal preference, but one of the things with dog training is basically the short leash idea. You want to keep dogs near you. And of course I can always custom make a different lengths dog leashes. I just prefer on my website to offer from three to four feet, but five and six feet lengths. You can always request that. You can always custom order that. 
With bigger dogs, you can always have shorter leashes. That's not a huge deal because they're usually at waist level. And so the leash, you don't want it to dangle. I'm not a huge fan of dangly leashes. So if you have either a, a big dog or even a, even a small dog and you have a leash that is too long, what I find often is that the dogs end up tripping over or getting tangled up in uh, the leash. So that's the other reason I went with shorter lengths. So the other part I want to talk about was braiding versus like an overlap. A lot of dog leashes that are leather or just in general, they kind of they do this fold over flap, right? So you fold the leather back, you rivet it down, and you put stitching on it. And that's kind of the standard method to make it that it does allow for longer leather because when you braid it, it actually shortens the strap down significantly. But two things to keep in mind if you're ordering that or if you're making that is first the failure point is either going to be the stitching or rivets. I strongly recommend using both rivets and stitching. And the other piece about stitching, what you want to look for, what you want to use is super thick polyester thread. Now, polyester is more durable than nylon, cotton, all those things. It is mold and mildew and UV resistant. And so that is actually the only thing I stitch with, with whether it's my dog leashes or, or wallets or journals, any anything I stitch is done with polyester because it is the most durable thread. The thread I use is about 40 pounds of tensile strength. And what's really cool about the braided leash versus an overlap leash is that the braiding actually kind of intertwines and strengthens the leather. It kind of reinforces it within itself. Whereas with something that's overlapped, you know, you have a rivet and stitching and those are failure points. And what you want to look for if you are making it or if you're ordering or buying something with stitching on it is that you want to routinely check the stitching that it's not fraying, that it's not rotting away. And the same thing with the rivets. You want to double check the rivets because rivets can pop off when you braid it and you weave it within itself. The rivet that I have on my dog leash is not really being put on pressure. It's really to just hold that tab down. So if you pull on this braided section, I'll show you one without a rivet. As I pull on this, you can see that the braid is not coming loose. Most of the pressure is just within the braid. The, the braid itself is taking that pressure. And because it is weaved within itself, that it makes for a far durable dog leash because the stress point is really the full braid. It really creates for a stronger fold over. One thing I'll talk about is that like this is a custom order I'm working on. This is kind of like a walking dog leash. It has a floating O-ring and you can kind of loop it around your waist or on your shoulders. It allows for like kind of a hands-free as you have it around your waist or slung over the shoulder. The dog then is right next to you or whatever. So if you're looking for a custom dog leash, something that's not available on my website, you can always shoot me a message. But there's a contact form on my website and we can talk about design and that kind of stuff. Be sure to check out my Instagram. I actually posted about the dog leashes. So those have been kind of on my Instagram and Twitter and Facebook for a while. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you're interested in tech, leather craft, EDC, and multi-tool stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram. It's at Tech Leather Craft, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, all that stuff. All the links will be in the description. Take care, guys. I will talk to you later.